All right, everyone, today in this video, I'll be showing you how to calibrate your MPU 650. I'll be using the Raspberry Pi Pico W, Thani, and MicroPython to do this, but really this is applicable to any microcontroller or any language you have. As long as you have your MPU 650 set up and getting readings, you can do a calibration process. And so the reason we wanna do a calibration process is to make our sensor readings more accurate because a lot of the times, uh, Cheap sensors like the MPU650 come with an inherent error when they're manufactured, so they're not 100% accurate. And what we're going to be focusing on in this video in part one is the gyroscopic acceleration or the, the gyro calibration for the sensor because there's six degrees of freedom and there's three degrees in the of angular acceleration that we're going to be focused on. So if I uh, run the script for you guys, which is in my previous video, you can see how to set the script up if you're using Raspberry Pi Pico W. But I'm going to run this script and it's going to... Um, actually, wait, let me, let me delete that. There's an error there, but it's going to show gyroscopic acceleration in all three degrees of acceleration. And you'll see that it's printing all these values, but my sensor is not moving. And when a sensor is not moving, your gyroscopic values should all be zero because there's no angular acceleration going on. So in order to uh, deal with this problem and have more accurate readings, we're going to go through the gyroscopic calibration process for the MPU650. In the next video, we'll be going over the, the other degrees of freedom for the linear acceleration, but this video will be focusing on the, the three angular values to, to get those values more accurate. So I'm just gonna jump into the script where I do that. Okay, so before I go into the, the code of the script, I just wanna explain one more time what I'm trying to do with the script. And I'm trying to get three values that'll offset the acceleration of my three gyroscopic values that in a steady state when the sensor is not reading, these offset values will make sure to the best degree of accuracy that those values are zero. So essentially we'll get three values that when we add it to the sensor values in a steady state for the angular acceleration, it should pretty much be zero. And you'll see that at the end of this video what I mean by that if, you, if you're still unclear of what I just said. Okay, so going into this code here, the first thing I do is I just make a connection to the MPU650 and then before I start running any gyro process, I'm going to uh, start with a settling time to allow my sensors to, uh, to reach stable values of, of reading. So I just set that to four seconds. Four seconds is a little overkill. You could do one second, it'll be just fine. And then here is essentially the meat of the, the calibration process. So I'm setting the calibration time to be 10 seconds. The, the longer the calibration time, the more accurate calibration you'll get, the more accurate offset values you'll get because you'll get more points to take a, a more accurate average. But 10 seconds will be fine for the sake of the video. And what I'm doing here is I'm just initializing the offset values uh, as zero initially. And the number of points, I haven't recorded any measurements. There should be a number of measurements. I don't know why I call it number of points, but it's, it's zero. And then I'm just running a while loop for the calibration time. So just know what I'm doing here is I'm running a, a while loop for 10 seconds to take as many measurements as I can in those 10 seconds. So I'm gonna sum up all of those measurements in all three uh, degrees of freedom. And once I have all of those sums, I'm going to divide by the number of measurements I took. So in the end, you're just gonna get three averages and three different axes of rotation. In this case, the gyroscopic axes of, of, uh, of rotation. And then those will be your offset values that you'll add to your, to your sensor readings in your real life application to make your sensor more accurate. And this will improve whatever you're doing when, when you're using the sensor. So that'll be nice. I'm just gonna run this and show you what it's going to produce. I have some nice print statements to show you that it's running and to show you how many uh, measurements it, it took. So let's just go ahead and run that. So you can see it's settling for four seconds. So it lets you know just to inform the user that something's happening. You don't wanna just run calibration for a minute and the screen's just blank. So as you can see, it's telling me how many points it took so far. And the end, it tells me how many points it took. And then I have all the offsets. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these offsets and I'm gonna show you what they do to the sensor values for my gyroscopic uh, acceleration values. Okay, so going back to the first script I showed you at the beginning of this video where I was just calculating the GX, GY, GZ. By the way, you can ignore this temperature thing. I had this in a previous video I was doing. This is just temperature readings. I'm just gonna delete that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add the corresponding offset for each, for each axis. So I'm just gonna do this. Or not add, I should be subtracting actually. So if I subtract this, it'll be minus minus or it should be plus. 
and the other one will just be minus minus, so it will be plus this as well. And after I do this whole thing, you'll see that the values are much closer to zero now, much more accurate. So I'm gonna run the script and you'll see that for yourself. And so yeah, that's it, the calibration process is done. So now you can use these constant values when your sensor is moving for your application, uh, whatever it is. And just note two things here is that this calibration process is not the most accurate, sophisticated calibration process. It is good for a majority of cases, but there are more sophisticated calibration processes you can find online if you go read about them. But this is uh, sufficient for a lot of the applications. Uh, mine and I'm sure many others will find this good enough. Another thing you want to note is that uh, you do have to recalibrate every once in a while. So the gyro will drift over time and typically you want to recalibrate every time you use a sensor, ideally, but a lot of times you can't do that. So just keep that in mind is that these are accurate for some time, but just try to recalculate these every once in a while. And I'm sure you can do this dynamically in your script. Other than that, I just want to say like, comment, subscribe, stay, stay tuned for part two, which is the linear acceleration. And let me know what you want to see in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Thank you.